I heard we were live. That's the rumor. So let me tell you the story about the middle of the day today. Oh, let me hear this story. Okay. So I've uh, been doing this massive document migration and access project for the last month or so for this organization that does a bunch of like charity and grant work for like social justice organizations around the world. Okay. Um, so it's like work. I'm not ashamed to be doing. <laughs> it's yeah. like actually good work. Um, yeah. But there are a couple things about this project. that are a goddamn annoyance. Like the entire point of the project is to replace this software. That's costing them a bunch of money that will no longer be costing them a bunch of money once we're finished. And we're, you know, almost done. So there was this big push to get it done by, like, the beginning of November. So we're kind of, like, cleaning up some things now, but, you know, it's mostly done. Like, we're just addressing some issues. Sure. So. Uh, I am on projects. I understand how this works. <laughs> yeah. I don't know why I gave so much backstory on that. <laughs> it's not super relevant to the thing. Anyway, so this issue came up today. Uh and it was like one of those, oh, well, this hits a scenario that breaks, I don't know, a lot of this, you know, just a lot of this whole process thing here. That sucks. So I'm like scrambling to fix the thing and like, you know, I'm gunslinging some solutions here. Uh, and so I'm like, all right, I've got the fix. Let's just roll this thing out. And then I think we're going to be like, we're going to be fine. Like. If we didn't come up with this fix this quick, we were going to have to undo a bunch of stuff, which would have sucked. But, you know, it's fine. So I'm like, all right, I'll push this thing out. Everybody take a look at it. Make sure that we're we're good to go here. And I think we're, I think we're fine. So uh, then I hear some noises from outside. Okay. So I live on a street that is not a through street. And, like, the loudest noises that I usually get here are my neighbor who has this sexual fascination with his leaf blower because the dude leaf blows like an hour and a half a day for mm. a reason when it rains he leaf blows his driveway it's just fucking bizarre i don't understand it but like that's the only regular noise stuff we get around here okay so like right outside my office window there are two like big trucks just idling there for, you know, an amount of time that makes me curious what's going on out there. Okay. So I look out and our local uh, electrical company, Anmarin, has two trucks there. Okay. So I'm looking at the guys and like, I know they were generally coming out at some point to do some uh, cleanup stuff on like this electrical work I had done. Sure. But no one told me when, and I didn't even really know if they had to turn the power off to do it. But so I was like, okay, well, whatever. I mean, I guess they're here to just do that. So this dude is standing awkwardly at the door to his truck while the other dude is like at his truck a bunch of feet away. And I'm like, what the fuck is this guy doing at his truck? Oh, he's pissing. He's pissing in his truck. <laughs> Like, oh, great. Well, I have seen a grown man piss today. <laughs> he pissed into his truck? I feel like it was an like Amazon a, situation. Like, like there was some, cup? yeah, like some container that he was pissing into, like, at the truck, like the seat floor level, sure. if you're standing next to the truck. Yeah, I mean, that's that's probably, depending on the, the height of the truck, that's, that's probably about right. Mm -hmm. So... I was like, okay, great. So now I was like, all right, well, I'll just avoid interacting with these people. This comment was more. prior to this, but I feel like this one is now mm -hmm. now it's cogent to the story. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So they don't knock on my door. They just roll into my backyard, bang their ladders against my house, and start climbing all over my roof, which I don't particularly care about because, like, I know they need to do this thing. Sure. So I just go about my business of fixing this massive problem on this project I've got when. Of course, the entire house's power goes out. Ugh. Of course. Of and course. so then I'm like, Ugh, this is like the worst time for this. <laughs> I 
I've already sent the email that I'm doing this deployment. So, like, people are literally waiting on me for, to get this thing done. <laughs> so, I, like, the dudes on the ladders are right outside my kitchen window. And, like, they're also bullshitting with each other while they're doing the thing. Loudly. And they're talking about, like, how they're not getting their fucking overtime. Like, they, they have to keep following up with their fucking overtime. And then some other weird gossip. So, I like, poke my head out the back door. I'm like, hey, uh, you got a timeline on this power situation? <laughs> I'd only be out 10 minutes. Fuck me. So an hour and a half later. Uh, it was only like 15 minutes. That's not bad. That, it wasn't. Yeah. I mean. No, that's not bad. The electrician already did all the work. They were just moving it from the thing to the other thing. Sure. That the things. So. But I got to watch a grown man piss today. That's the real crux of my story. That's Holy the important you. point. Yep. Uh, you know what? I finished watching this movie today, so mm -hmm. I did too. <laughs> uh huh. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah. All right. So uh, hold on. Right, You're let's... not gonna tell me what happened at uh, Holden's play. Uh, yeah. We uh we left here Saturday morning. Uh, had a pretty easy drive. I mean, it's it's a three hour drive. You know, what it's, are you gonna it's, do? yeah, uh, actually, I mean, there's, there's some construction about halfway, actually it's about two thirds of the way that on a normal day, we'll back things up like a good hour rolled right through it because there just, just wasn't a lot of traffic on a Saturday morning. So sure. we rolled, just cruised right on through that. So that was great. Uh, had lunch when we got down there with my folks. My uh, my parents came and they brought uh, my grandmother, and uh, so that was that was fantastic. We had a you know we picked up Holden, had a good lunch, uh, visited with him for a bit, um, uh, met the person that he's seeing. So that that was kind of cool. They they seem uh, very cool, oh. and um, uh, and then met them later also. But uh, yeah, we um, we went to lunch. Met them, hung met out. them twice. Yeah, well, we met them and then saw them later at the play. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, the The show was fantastic. The show was uh, the importance of being earnest, which I had no connection with. I've I've never read the play. I had never seen it performed in any fashion have never seen the, any of the movie versions of it. Uh, I thoroughly enjoyed it. It was a lot of fun. Uh, are you familiar with the story? No. Okay. So it's a, it's an Oscar Wilde comedy. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a, uh, I mean, the, the basic premise is there are these two dudes who are like uh, the one dude is from the country and the other's from the city. And the dude from the country is like, yeah, when I come to the city, I don't go by my real name. I go by Ernest because, you know, if Ernest gets into trouble, that trouble doesn't follow Jack home. And, uh, and so the other guy's like, huh? Yeah. I, I, uh, I've got this character that I make up for when I go into the country and so at different points in the story, both of these dudes are going by the name Ernest mm -hmm. and comedy ensues. Sure. Mm -hmm. uh, the the kind of clever thing they did with the play version was uh, that they set it like the dialogue. They kept the same. I think the only line of dialogue they changed was at one point, somebody's talking about uh, going to America in this version, in the original, it was like they were going to Australia. Mm. Like that, that was like literally the only change. The, um, the, the cool thing was, is they actually set it in the 1960s. So for mm. costuming and for um, just for set design, things like that, they set it in the 1960s. And like they had some like incidental music playing in the background and it was all 60s music, mm. which was cool and different. And actually it, I think it got my folks more into the play because like, that's the, that's like the era of music that they grew up with. It'd be like setting something in the eighties for me, you know? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. 
yeah, we all enjoyed it. It was a lot of fun. Holden got uh, the probably the biggest laugh of the of the show because uh, he plays a a priest, and at one point somebody like accuses him of being like risque with a with a woman, and mm-hmm. it, he's a he's a a minister, so he's not like a Catholic priest, so. Like it's okay if like he were to date a woman and and whatever. It's just, but I don't want to stand up for this one because there's a visual component involved. At some point, he goes, uh, "No, no, no! I am a chaste man." <laughs> <laughs> Puts his hand over his crotch, <laughs> steps away, and does the sign of the cross. It was like, oh my god! It was the funniest goddamn thing. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> uh, the 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 show was great. Uh. Yeah. Hmm. Well, that's good. Yeah. All, good all in all, it was, a, well. it was a good night. Uh, he's He seems to be doing well. The The performances were... He said the, the previous performances went well. The Sunday one went great. So, mm-hmm. yeah. How was Four the... Good, uh, weird shows. What was the attendance like with all the weird, I assume, COVID stuff? Um, I don't think they had quite 100 in attendance. It's a smaller venue. Um, I don't know exactly how many seats the venue has. It can probably seat. I don't know if I'm if I'm guessing maybe two hundred. And there was probably, I would guess, seventy eighty people there. Sure. There was actually a pretty pretty decent attendance. Um, students get in for free, so there was a a goodly number of students there. Um, after the show, we kind of waited around in the uh, in the vestibule area outside for him, and like he came out and was giving hugs to a bunch of people, high fiving people, like a bunch of people from different classes. He invited to show up, mm. showed up for the show. Uh, so they all seem very pleased with the attendance. So, yep. I, that was great. Yeah, sick. Well, that's good that he's uh. Got his shit going on down there. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And uh, in fact, I think uh, depending on the situation for um, the spring, if he gets uh, if he gets cast in the spring show, which I'm thinking odds are fairly decent. He did not get cast in the musical, Mm -hmm. but the spring show is Murder on the Orient Express. Mm -hmm. So. uh I think he's got fair enough odds. Plus, like the two guys who are leads in this, one of them he's a senior. This is, this is his last performance. The other one is going to be assistant director of of, of murder. So, oh. yeah. So it's like, oh well, those those two guys are definitely not going to be in the running for any of the roles. So. Yeah. And he's a freshman, so he's got plenty of opportunities. Holden's a freshman. He's got plenty of opportunities. So. Even if he doesn't make it, but if he does, we're gonna. I think I'm gonna try to get a a big group to go down. Hmm. Just see if people want to go down, get some road rooms. trip, baby. Yep. Yep. Wait, when is that? Uh, it's the end of April, beginning of May. Hmm. That that weekend that that crosses over the end of April, beginning of May. Well, there's shit else going on. Yeah. Yeah, oh. we'll see. And that's close enough to the uh, bourbon trail. It is. It like a little, really little detour. is. Like a little it detour. really is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. I'm, it it kind of bummed me out that I only got to see one show. So maybe, I'm thinking maybe in the spring, depending on how things are going. Because I think this big project that I'm working on should be just about wrapped up by then. So take a couple extra days, go, you know. See the Thursday night show Friday, you know, go hit some of the bourbon trail. Yeah, it's a it's a bit of a drive, but go hit hit a little bit of the bourbon trail. Come back for the Friday night show. <laughs> Just yep, make little day it. trips out of it. Mm-hmm. Yep, oh. have a have a home base to come back to and chillax. Come back see the show and, mm-hmm. and crash with some of the the bourbon that was picked up along the way. You know how it is. 
I do. I do know how it is. <laughs> I know how it is very much. So, uh, yeah, it was. It was good. It was very good. Sick. All right, let's uh, let's get this ball rolling. Hey, this is Tony, and this is David, and we are the backseat producers. That's what I heard. At least two of us tonight. Mm-hmm. After the full house we had last week to nerd out about Dune. Yep. So uh, this week we're talking about election. Uh, next week we're going to talk about uh, um, Shang Chi. Mm. This Friday is um, Disney Plus Day, so it gives people the opportunity if they have not seen it before, okay. and they have Disney Plus, they can. It's it's part of their subscription plan as of this Friday. You made it too easy for him, Tony. You know what? Uh, cut those excuses right out. <laughs> I'm seeing a private screening of The Eternals on Thursday, which is apparently now the only way I will see movies, Marvel movies. Hey, you know is, what? Uh, in private theaters. Uh, I haven't seen it yet. I think I'm going to try and see it this Tuesday, this coming Tuesday. I like mm. these Tuesday night showings now that, like, now that I'm just home all the time, just running out to a movie on a Tuesday night is just so much easier. It feels decadent. Oh, uh, it's, well, the, Price is right too. I mean, mm-hmm. seeing a movie for five bucks. I think I mentioned when I saw Dune, I just got the seat next to me. <laughs> like, fuck it. I don't, I don't need to sit next to a rando. Mm-hmm. But I think uh, all three of us are going to go see it when when we go. That I want to. I kind of want to see this uh, last night in Soho movie, the new Edgar Wright movie with. Uh, I can never get the order of her names right. Is it Anna Joy Taylor? The the yeah, Queen's Gambit trick. The Queen's Gambit, yeah. Yep. Ilanya from uh, New Mutants. Sure, I'll take your word for it. All right. Uh, so election. I've really gotten off my seeing new movies game. Anna Taylor Joy. Anna Taylor Joy. I, I thought that was wrong. Turns out I was correct that it was wrong. <laughs> you were right. It was wrong. It was. I was going to be right one way or the other. <laughs> I like that hedging. You know what? What'd you think of the movie, Tony? Uh, I am not a fan mm-hmm. of Reese Witherspoon. Mm-hmm. And she was well cast in this movie for me not being a fan of her. Mm-hmm. She was incredibly annoying. Mm-hmm. But, but that was the character that she was playing. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think with the the exception of Chris Klein's character, which I can't remember his name right now. Matt? Was it Matt? I had these grandiose plans of rewatching this. Did not do that. Yep. But I think Matt is his name. Yeah. Well, with your power being out, that... Uh... No, it was Paul. <laughs> oh, it was Paul. God damn it, you're right. <laughs> it is Paul. Um, I think with the exception of his character... And the principal? Like, pretty much all of the named characters in this this movie were terrible. Like, just generally not good people. When, okay. So, to be clear, the opinion that they are terrible is about them as them as character people. Them as character people, yes. Okay. So, not them as actors. No, no, no. Okay. No, I thought, <laughs> I think, I thought the acting was great. Yeah. Uh, other than Chris Klein, because he just is really derpy like he was overly derpy oh no he's terrible but also i feel like kind of just like reese witherspoon he's very good for this yes yeah (laughs) this is like the role for him yeah he was typecast and also played it up yeah Mm -hmm. yeah he just has a a real dumb face (laughs) he does he's just a real dumb face yep Mm mm-hmm Okay. Yeah, right there. Yep. Um, I thought the movie was generally okay. Okay. 
What did you think of the movie? I really liked the movie because I cannot tell you if I think this movie is a satire or not. That's fair. <laughs> it's interesting. I, I, it's interesting yeah. because it's it's MTV films. Mm-hmm. And it came out in 99. Is that yep. right? Mm-hmm. So, like, it's kind of a product of its time for certain things. Mm hmm. But yeah, I'm yeah. not sure. Like, it feels like it wants to be a satire, but I'm not sure what it's a satire of. Yeah. So, like, after watching this, I had a lengthy discussion about it. Sure. Like, so I don't know. They the movie tries really hard to make Matthew Broderick a sympathetic dude, and like, not in a way that feels satirical. That it, like it honestly feels earnest. That like you are supposed to feel bad for Matthew Broderick, but I don't. You don't now, but. In 1999, like this is this is another thing that I think really fascinates me about this movie. Like, if it is not a satire, that means in 1999 you were earnestly supposed to feel bad for Matthew Broderick because this high school girl ruined his life. And I just don't think there's enough the choices he made, though. Uh huh. Like but that's. But they get Matthew Broderick, mm -hmm. and you look at his face, and you're like, it's like, you know, a B-plus Tom Hanks. He's just got that face, right? Like, you know, you want to be Matt Broderick's buddy. Yeah. He's yeah. one of his buddy. It's fucking Ferris Bueller. I think it was doing trying to do too much. Like, like there were points of it where legitimately you can feel sorry for him. Like mm. you can legitimately feel bad for this guy to a point. Uh, but that point comes like about a third of the way into the movie. I feel like it comes way before that. Like when? What? What point do you think it comes? I think it the... comes where it, like the his buddy is banging Reese Witherspoon, the student. Like his buddy teacher is banging Reese Witherspoon, the student, and then he's just like, "This is fine. I'll do nothing about this." Like, yeah, that's yeah. Seems... He should have. He should have done something about that. <laughs> that uh, point yeah. comes. I forgot. I forgot very that that early exactly how that happened. <laughs> For for some reason, I was conflating that the buddy admitted it, but that's not what happened. He got caught mm -hmm. yeah, because he, he wrote caught. a love letter. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Just that like super cringy scene. He's like, oh, her pussy is so wet. Oh, oh. Mm. yeah. So but this this is the thing in 1999, I feel like. This it isn't a satire though. Like I no. don't think the intent here is that like oh this is a horrible thing that happens and you're supposed to be like Matthew Broderick's a bad dude. Like he's just not a good dude. I don't think that's the point of everything that's happened so far. I think the point of all of that happening is so that you end up hating Reese Witherspoon. Yeah. See that's but the that... weird thing. Like, <laughs> there's, there's, I don't think this movie knew what it wanted to do. Like, when you get to the end of it, it's like, mm. what was the point of this? There's not, there doesn't feel like that there's a point to this. Like, other than don't be a shitty person. Yeah. But even that doesn't really even come that, through. Yeah, it doesn't. Cause, like, at the end of the movie, he's much happier. 
kind like of. He's met that new chick, and he's got a job he really likes, and. Uh, I think he's. I think he's convinced himself that he's happier. Well, fuck, Tony. Haven't but we he, all? But I think he's not. I think he's he is not. much worse off. Yeah, I mean, he throws the shake. Yeah, he does. <laughs> but that. But this is the thing that kills me about it. I like there is the movie is not. One of two things is true. Either in 1999. This movie, based on that book, was so... I forgot that this was based on a book. Yes. You know who the author of that book is? The guy who wrote The Leftovers. Yep. Yep. Yeah. I, I remember seeing that when I was looking up information about this early. I did not read this book. I read some stuff about the book because I was trying to determine which of these two realities was the case. That one, this is just like a very tone deaf, literal, like movie where you're honestly supposed to feel bad for Matthew Broderick and all this bad shit that happens to him by by Reese Witherspoon, right? And then accidentally, over the last twenty years, as you know, our collective discussion on the nature of like child abuse and sexual assault in schools and like the power dynamics involved here like accidentally it has become like this weird satirical indictment of that that whole thing or if it was meant to be that the entire time but the problem is i just can't see enough in the movie as presented to make me think that it was intentional because it feels accidental and this is what drives me crazy about this fucking movie. <laughs> so I'm looking at the description of the book election. Yes. And I'm Somebody... looking at the description on Amazon. Mm -hmm. And it makes me feel like there was stuff that there were hooks in the movie that didn't play out. I'm sorry. Yeah, there were hooks in the movie that didn't play out, but maybe they did in the book. Yeah, I'm, I'm almost for sure. Uh, because, like, part of the description is, with all of the sex scandals, smear campaigns, and behind-the-scenes power brokers at Wynwood High, which it was Carver High in the movie, um, it doesn't look like they'll need any lessons. The book is, is like, it's classified as a dark comedy. Mm -hmm. Like, it feels like maybe there's there's more to it. It also says that he's the best-selling author of The Leftovers and Tracy Flick Can't Win. Yeah. So is there another sequel. book? I think book? a sequel, right? Really? But like... Oh just... my god. Uh, it's not out yet. It comes out in 2022. Hmm. I read some excerpts from the book that did not give me the warm fuzzy that this guy was advancing the discussion on power dynamics in 1990, whatever year that book came out. Yeah. Which did not really settle things for me because then I was just back to the exact same spot I was before where I don't know if this movie is a work of satire or not. I, I like literally cannot decide which way it goes. And it, it drives me goddamn crazy because it's either fascinating because the context has completely changed the content of the movie, which is super interesting because it's one of the reasons that I hate watching movies older than I am because I don't have the cultural context necessary to understand the movie, like as presented, mm -hmm. but now, am I old enough that I have the context of 1999 and I've got the context of 2021 and I can contrast two different contexts which have completely changed the meaning of the movie? It would have been interesting. I mean, I, I, can, I can see things there that 
like they there there could have been an examination of things like the the Clinton Lewinsky stuff. Just because that would have, I mean, that would have been in the fairly recent past. Mm -hmm. And like, it felt like maybe that could have been there without reading the book. It feels like maybe that it could have been in the movie, but they just didn't go there. Like, because that's culturally, that was like culturally relevant at the time. Right, right. I mean, you had um, that the look she gave the senator that she was working for right at the end. It's like, oh, is this a Monica Lewinsky situation here? Is that how she's moving up and moving, you know, moving on to the next stage of her life? I and then it just kind of goes away. I mean, it's just, it's just, it's, it's a, not a thing. There's, I mean, there's a line about, her talking about Dave, the teacher that 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 caused all the problems at the very beginning of the movie. Like, oh, I miss him. I miss our talks. I'm like, Ugh. I don't know. It's it, less weird from her. It is. It does. It comes off less weird from her, but still, it's like there's just. It doesn't feel like a complete movie. This movie doesn't feel complete. It feels like it it was carrying the ball down the field and then just decided, you know what? I'm done. I'm just gonna end now. I'm on the fifteen yard line. I'm just I'm just done. Mm-hmm. I don't it just feel... felt like it ran out of steam. I don't feel I don't feel like it's incomplete. I just don't know. It's like not strong enough of a. It's like not strong enough of a movie to pull like an Inception ending where you're like, oh fuck, is this reality or not? Because like, like there isn't a a, a thing, right? But also, I don't get the strong sense that like I don't know what the movie is supposed to be saying yeah i I don't get the theme i mean i kind of get the theme i just don't what is the theme it bothers me that i don't know if they honestly expect me to feel bad for matthew broderick or not because they spent a lot of the movie trying to make me feel bad for matthew broderick they do because the theme of this movie is like well this bitch is fucking up his life but like, also, this bitch is like a sixteen-year-old girl. <laughs> like, I think, it's an and adult I think, man. I think thematically, and I think they didn't do a good a good job of showing this. Is that he was pushing the blame off on other people for his terrible decisions? Yeah. No, I mean, he's just a normal dude. He he justified. <laughs> yeah, he was trying to justify all of his terrible decisions. Because of the actions of others. Yeah. Like, he didn't get involved with uh, his buddy teacher because, you know, it's not really his fucking problem. Yeah. Well, I mean, it would have meant he'd lose his buddy. Uh, He didn't... He didn't talk to his wife about the fact that he was not uh, engaged with her sexually when she's just like, fill me up fill me up where it's like, you know, clearly they, you know, they, they shot it and, and was telling us that in a way that made, you know, that he didn't feel good about even having sex with his wife. Yeah. So like somehow that justifies him wanting to bang his buddy's ex. Yeah. Justifiable boning. Yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, like the movie tries every trick in the goddamn book to make you feel sorry for Matthew Broderick and justify away all the shit that he does in the movie. That's really bad. <laughs> it, see, it felt like it it was trying to, but I never felt bad for the guy. I think and, you don't feel bad for the guy now. 
But I think in 1999, I don't know that that was the prevailing okay culture. But I can opinion. tell you, but I can tell you, I saw this movie. I don't remember when, but I'm pretty sure I saw it like on a VHS tape. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe even uh, a Netflix DVD. Okay. But Julie and I watched this movie, and I did not remember anything about this goddamn movie as I watched it. Mm-hmm. Like, I literally had completely wiped this movie from my memory. Yeah. I didn't remember it. It is utterly forgettable. Yeah, and I feel like in 1999, it is utterly forgettable. Uh, in 2021, it's utterly forgettable. <gasps> but that's... I don't... The, it's driving me fucking crazy, Tony. I don't know if it was just way ahead of its time or is just I think a it's just movie. a poorly made I think it's just a poorly made movie. My vote that's what my vote is. I just yeah. think it's poorly made. I think somebody got somebody got a hot property because this movie came out in 99, the book was released in 98. Mhm. There could not have been an incredible amount of lead time. Granted, the book came, well, the paperback came out in 98. I don't know if there was a hardcover before that. Mm -hmm. Uh, Let me just look, though. But also, like, cinemagraphically, it's not a bad movie. Like, if you take out all of the... All of the content of the movie. <laughs> uh, oh, look at, like, oh wow! the The movie was shot before the book was published. That's a weird shooting thing. occurred in ninety seven. The book was published in January of ninety eight. That's fucking weird. Uh, it's also ranked number nine on a t- Entertainment Weekly's fifty best high school movies. Although I feel like I can list several that are better than this. Yeah. The, but the, okay, so this this is the confusing thing. Like the the movie, like the technical aspects of the movie are not bad. Like it's visually interesting. The dialogue is fine. Like it's snappy enough to keep you entertained. Like I none agree. of the scenes like feel like they drag on forever. Like uh, like the camera work is like entertaining inoffensive they there are actually a couple of interesting camera moves uh at one point she's falling into the bed sideways and the camera is is on her face as she you know as Mm -hmm. she as she falls so it's you it's kept forward in the frame the whole way down that's clever yeah i i agree that it's not poorly made it's not a poorly made movie i think it's a poorly written movie I think it's a poorly written screenplay. I think there are, and I don't think that dialogue is the problem. Dialogue is not the problem. I think the story is the problem. I agree with you. Because I'm, this I'm doesn't honestly, feel... I'm honestly very curious to read the book. Uh, like after I... this, I'm really curious to read the book to see if the book has these same flaws or if there were things cut from the movie from the, from the, in the adaptation process that, that lost something. Mm -hmm. Uh, So I looked at the other things that this dude had directed and uh, have not seen. And Oh wait, that's not true. He wrote uh, the opening episode. Uh, He directed the opening episode of hung on Showtime which is a show about Tom Jane having a big dick. I have never seen that show. I'm a, I'm a, I'm aware of it. I just have never seen it. I have watched all of it and I really enjoyed it. And that is it. That is uh, everything I've seen of this guy. <laughs> everything I've seen of this guy. Uh, yeah, all of it. Oh no, he uh, he wrote Jurassic Park three. The the director. So, I don't have any other real work to compare his stuff to to determine whether or not I think this guy is like super clever with the way that he did this. Yeah. Because what I've read about uh, 
the dude who wrote the book, Parada. Tom Parada. Yeah. Doesn't really feel me fill me with the a ton of confidence that dude is like really pushing the boundaries of you know like power dynamics and whatever in life like that dude just seems like a random jackhole um independent of whatever magic he spewed forth for the leftovers books which Mm -hmm. since i have not read them i can't tell you if the books don't also just blow and uh terry coon carried that series which is possible because Carrie Coon is fucking amazing. I agree. So. Uh, apparently, Amazon Web Services is down right now because I went to try to look for for this book on Audible. Mm-hmm. And I can't get to Audible's website, nor really? can I That's get awesome. to Amazon. I have I pulled up the Amazon page a few minutes ago, but I cannot get back to Amazon right now. This is pretty fantastic. Uh, actually, I can sign into it. Really? Yep. Uh, yeah. I don't uh, know what's going on? My I, I looked know. and I could not find an audiobook for this. Uh, yeah, I'm on. I'm on. I, I still have Amazon's page up, and it it shows that there are hardcovers and paperbacks available. But normally, they would also give you the link to a uh, an audiobook right there. Mm-hmm. So I'm probably not going to be reading this. <laughs> I had. Uh, I have thirteen Amazon or uh, Audible credits right now. I'm gonna. I also have thirteen Audible. Are you logged into my account, Tony? <laughs> Fuck. Well, at least someone's using those credits. You know. Uh you know what? Right now, I'm just kind of waiting for the end of the month. I'm just kind of hovering. I've got my pre-order in, and I'm just waiting. I know. It's the real problem with my life right now is that since I don't drive nearly as often. I find it harder to, I, I mean, I have been driving, but I find it harder to start audiobooks now because I don't have a consistent schedule where I'm going to read them. And mm. I don't, sometimes I like silence in my life. And uh, so I don't listen to audiobooks all the time. So, I mean, I'm going to have to figure something out when The Expanse comes out. But Yep. Yep. Road trip. Yep. Well, maybe I'll go to New York to see a concert. All right, there you go. Yeah, I'm. I thought this was an enjoyable two hours, mm-hmm. but I don't think there's anything really to take away from it. Yeah, so it's like it's not a 1999 slog to get through. No. Because, like, as we culturally have evolved our storytelling or, or production, like, just like every other communication medium that we get to, our, like, cuts are quicker, and the dialogue is snappier, and the tempo of, like, media is just faster now. So, like, a lot of old work just feels intolerably slow. And this doesn't feel like that at all. Yeah, it doesn't feel like no, that. No, I feel... Yeah. It feels it feels it feels modern. Mm-hmm. It doesn't feel dated in that. I mean, other than these actors that you know are older right now. <laughs> I mean, that's that's really the only difference. Reese yeah. Witherspoon doesn't look like an infant. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, Matthew Broderick doesn't look younger than me <laughs> anymore. I mean, in this movie he did but yeah otherwise no it's how old do you think matthew broderick is uh, let's see probably mid 60s just guessing he is 60 really he's 59 but he's 60 yeah. oh we're actually in the same decade then Whoa, I didn't realize I was recording with a celebrity knower. That's <laughs> a celebrity <laughs> age decade adjacent her. Just makes me old. That's <laughs> what it does. Uh, yeah. I don't know. I, I just have a. I, I think 
I think the only cleverness to the story even was there's I mean there was just one bit and it was it it was the only thing I think it was the only thing in the story that actually surprised me a little bit and it was when he gets busted with uh with the election fraud yeah and he goes into the office and it's like this this crew of people it's like there's tracy oh shit there's the principal oh shit there's tracy's mom oh fuck and then there's the janitor that he pissed <laughs> off at the beginning and it was like that flashback to him dumping that food out at the beginning it's like all right <laughs> you got me that was good <laughs> All right, justice has been served this day. <laughs> because that's like the first, like the first thing you see him do, mm-hmm. you know, other than his jog and his shower, and then he's trying to put up his put his food away. So he makes the decision to just throw other people's stuff away and make a mess on the floor and not clean it up like that. Like that. That tells you right there. This guy, this guy is just, he makes decisions and doesn't think them through. Nope. Uh, and there are consequences to every decision. I guess that's the, I guess that's the closest I can come to a theme mm-hmm. is that there are consequences to your decisions. Yeah, but I hate that, Tony, both thematically and in real life. <laughs> <sighs> they could have done something really interesting with uh chris klein's just being a nice guy i don't think i should vote for myself that's kind of weird so i'm just gonna not vote for myself and then he lost by one vote Mm -hmm. like there could have been something more interesting that happened there i don't know what yeah and he was kind of dopey and dumb though like It didn't even really feel like that off. No, it didn't. But it felt like there should have been something, some better payoff for that. I don't know. Like, I don't know. I'm just, this movie didn't win me over. Like, I think, I think this is, I mean, this is the second time I've watched this movie and it will likely be the last. Like, I don't, I don't see ever going back to this. I don't know that I'm going to go back to it. What is your, what is going on with you? I'm busy. I don't need you here. Come on. Oh, Amazon is back now. But Audible still isn't. That's weird. Uh, it does look like this uh, Tracy Flick can't win novel mm-hmm. is available or will be available uh, as an audio book. Mm. I think I'm just going to have to break down and buy the goddamn book, well, which I did not want to do. I mean, what what is like what could likely happen is now that they're coming out with this this book, if it does it all well, I, I can see them retroactively going back and doing an audio book. Mm. I mean, you, you get the same reader, you know, the same narrator. I mean, honestly, I could just I could just read the book. <laughs> I don't like doing that. I don't like I, doing that anymore. Just, honestly, if I'm being talking about honest. it like like it's just this absolutely intolerable situation. I think if I enjoyed the movie more, I would be more inclined to get the book and read it, mm. like with 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 the book in my hand. But eh. Tony, I have to know. What do you have to know? Here's what I believe. I believe it was unintentional. I believe this is not a realistic commentary, a satirical commentary. That's what I believe. I don't think it was satire. I think it was just dark humor. I think that's all it was intended to be. But... That's not the nature of humor. Uh, but look at something like Swimming with Sharks. 
a movie I do not remember. I enjoy that movie, but it is it is a dark comedy. And I don't think there's a message behind it other than don't treat people like shit. Ooh, is that another movie that's been recontextualized? Interesting. <laughs> given given who uh, the lead in that movie was. Yeah. Do, do we feel different about that movie now? No. I don't a little think more so. uh, biographical. <laughs> no, in fact, I think it just kind of leans harder into the fact that. I mean, is it is it now autobiographical? <laughs> was was the role he played more him than we ever realized? Dude, why are you like this? I just <laughs> fed you. What what do you want? What do you want from me? I don't know what is going on with the internet. It must be an Illinois thing. It must be because now I can't get to Facebook either. I can assure from you, from my Facebook browser, is not down. I can't get to it from my browser. I don't know what the fuck is going on here. Your uh, computer caught something. I, I guess. I guess. Uh, has your computer been vaccinated? Hmm, that's a good question. What about them boosters? Maybe it needs a booster along with me because uh, I still haven't gotten that yet either. You haven't gotten your booster yet? No. No, we have not done that yet. Just haven't made the time. I've been also stupid with working lately. So, yeah. Last week, I uh, on Wednesday, I had this headache the entire day until about 8.30 at night, half an hour before we started recording. Mm-hmm. I had this fucking killer headache all day. Went to sleep, woke up at like 7.30, saw next door that uh, like my city was doing an open booster vaccination thing. They're like, literally anyone can just come down here and get a booster. Starts at 8. And I was like, ugh, fine. I'll just go do that. And then like I was driving home and I was like, I felt like shit all day yesterday. Why would I go get my booster today? <laughs> Just lean into it. Ugh. I don't want to stack multiple days of having a persistent headache, but that's what I did. All right. So all of this has been uh, ball tickling for what I really want to talk about here. We're in the spoiler zone now. Yeah. Because I want to talk about Big Mouth. And how they killed Andrew. Ah, uh, man. What what is the thing that you want to talk about with uh, with Big Mouth? I just like this season. Uh, I like the season. I like the the way they did uh, different holidays. How they basically set this all in a two month period, uh -huh. Uh -huh. given that the first episode was No Nut November all the uh -huh. way through uh, New Year's. Uh -huh. I liked the Christmas special. With the puppets. Uh -huh. I dug that. Uh -huh. I uh, did look and could not find a puppet to purchase you for Christmas. Oh, man. I was I was thinking about doing the same thing. I know. Because when I saw that Rick come out, I was like, oh, fuck. Yeah. I could oh, not my God. find. <laughs> of course, I watched it all over the weekend. Yeah. So I don't know if that's a thing that will have happened. That might have happened by now. Right. I mean, that's. Pro I mean, they're probably on Etsy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I just liked it in general. I like the I like the addition of the love bugs and hate worms. Uh huh. Uh, I just like the whole thing. I, I thought it was uh, it was a good season. Yeah, it was all right. I enjoyed it, but I don't know. I think uh... I'll be honest. I felt like the end of the season was a series finale. Uh huh. And was surprised to learn that it's already been greenlit for a sixth season. Yep. 
that actually surprised me given the the last episode uh-huh. how 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 uh Nick met Nick I actually really dug that that was really good i liked I liked the uh oh yeah i gotta I gotta go do your lines what what do you mean i'm not I'm not voiced by will Arnett <laughs> <laughs> Because, yeah, I was sure in the first season that Maury was Will Arnett. Yep, me too. I was convinced. Me too. Yeah. Me too. I do not. There is no stuffed Rick. That is a shame. Yes. Are there the little penises, though? Do not go looking for the little penises. <laughs> I'm. I am not going to do that right now. I'll wait till I'm in an incognito window. <laughs> I uh, might already have a tracking number. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. It, I I dug it. I thought it was a fun season. Yeah. No. I mean, it's always good. Like the writing is consistently excellent. Yeah. Uh. I it the whole season did kind of feel like uh, a big setup for human resources also. <laughs> Cause that's, I mean, that's, that's the spinoff they're doing with, with all the monsters. Yeah. So. Uh, I, and I don't know if they revealed it before this, but I like the the multiple times hearing again Jay Zarian, Rick Flarian, Bolzarian. <laughs> <laughs> Christ. Woo. <laughs> yeah. Don't quote your dad's law commercials to me. <laughs> we'll never not get just never not make me laugh. No. Uh, I did notice uh, in the credits that uh, Manzukas is a consulting producer. He has a consulting producer credits. Uh, I'm assuming that means he he has some say in in the way the character goes. I'm I'm guessing. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, I feel like this season was fine. Like, it's di- it's a difficult show to follow, I think, season to season. But... What do you mean by that? Uh, I mean, like, so they aren't aging the characters very quickly. No. So it feels super disjointed season to season as they do stuff. Gotcha. Because, like, the cast is big, and also the timing feels weird. Like, things happen very quickly after each other, but it doesn't feel like a consistent pace or theme. So, like, events have happened, like, last week. At the beginning of this season, the events of last season happened, like, a week or two before but like they feel super different so it's like kind of hard to yeah I, I get you i get you there and they're also like in a weird place where like these kids are like 13 <laughs> and they're getting drunk and high <laughs> like, yeah well there's regularly that. <laughs> yeah there's a but they can't age them too much are they like mm-hmm. the the theme of the show just kind of falls apart yep Mm-hmm. Like I think, I think the only other option they have is that if they would have some of the characters have younger siblings, yeah. That as they age up and out, like the younger siblings start going through this also, with mm-hmm. with just different going through different iterations of these things, yeah. Instead, we take the step back, and now we see that the older siblings have uh, 
that also have like the hormone monster. Like when we see um, Leah's. Leah's, that it's Bonnie. <laughs> Bonstons. <laughs> Bonstons. <laughs> the show yeah. is really well written. <laughs> it, it is. It the really jokes is. are always really fucking good. I started rewatching uh, some of it before this came out. And mm-hmm. it's like, ah, damn! This show is well. This show has been consistently well written, just from day one. <laughs> I'm kind of amazed that they keep getting some of the voice talent back to to play some of these roles, like that are just really small parts. Like who? it's 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 just pleasing. Uh shit. I'm blinking now. There was a couple of characters that that showed up like in the middle of like in the first couple of episodes of this season. I'm trying to remember now. Well, uh getting Fillion on to voice himself was was pretty great. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, and he does it somewhat regularly too. Yeah. It's just nice that they can keep getting them back to do that kind of stuff. Uh-huh. Uh... So Nick Kroll has writing credits on 52 episodes. Uh-huh. I'm looking now. Oh, uh, Kristen Wiig coming back as <laughs> Jesse's vagina regularly. <laughs> That's pretty great. Um, Galifianakis coming back as the Gratitude. Mm-hmm. Let's see. Who else was I thinking of? I think it was mostly those two were just the ones that kind of stuck out in my head. Fucking Mark Duplis and Paul Shear play Jay's brothers. <laughs> the fucking that's, le- the league reunion. <laughs> that's pretty great. <laughs> and that was actually Hugh Jackman. Hugh Jackman. Mm-hmm. And Gene Smarts, the Depression Kitty. Yeah, she was really good at that too. Mm-hmm. Uh, and can we talk about Adam Scott for a minute as Mr. Keating? <laughs> Did you notice the cones of Dunshire? That was like, that was, that was such a great moment when you just look and it's like, wait a minute, those are the cones. What? The-? Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's so fucking good. I, I saw an article earlier today that, uh, that, that was about his appearance there. And like, here are all of the Easter eggs for from adam scott's episode (laughs) and apparently they were just littered with it and i just missed most of them i saw the cones i didn't uh, nothing else really stuck out to me uh i didn't notice but apparently there's a poster of letters from cleo letters to cleo which was a band that he listened to which is like a band that he mentioned being a fan of on parks and rec (laughs) uh there were some other things i can't I'm blinking now on on all of them, but there was a apparently a couple of Parks and Rec callbacks. Oh, I'll have to go back and rewatch it. Yeah, it was good. Yeah, I had forgotten that it was coming out. Me too. Uh, and Friday morning or Friday, yeah, Friday was like, ah, I got a couple of episodes of Lost in Space left from season. I I never watched season two, so I went back and watched that. And I had like three episodes left of that. And I was like, ah, I'm just going to watch these today. And, uh, I pulled up Netflix and was like, oh shit, Big Mouth started. (laughs) So I, I plowed through uh, Lost in Space and watched 
an episode and a half of Big Mouth before I was just, I, I get tired. I had to stop. Plus, I had to leave early in the morning on Saturday, so. Uh-huh. Uh, apparently on his shelf, uh, there are a couple of books, which include Cones and Castles and Accounting. <laughs> uh, there's a Letters to Cleo poster in the background of the bar. Uh, and Ben is a fan of the band, and they show up at the Pawnee Eagleton Unity concert. Of course, there's the cone figurines. The 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 scruffy look that the character has is supposedly a a uh, homage to to the actor. Yeah, they do a lot of just keep the people looking like what they yeah look like. It's or easy. Probably, yeah, it probably looks like, yep. Yeah. You don't have to do a character design on somebody that's... Uh-huh. It's just me and the writers working at our shit. That is what it feels like. Yep. It does. All right. I don't have too much else to talk about. Yep, me neither. All right. Uh, All right, so next week we're going to talk about Shang-Chi. And we'll figure out what's after that. Actually, uh, what's after that is tea Thanksgiving. Mm. Oh, fuck. We got to work out what's happening for that. Yep. I have to dust off the actual recording equipment for that. Maybe. All right. I don't know why we're not doing that just in general anyway. Uh, well, I've paid for this service. We might as well use it. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. I mean, there's that. That's good. That's a good point. Also, this does save me an hour and a half of driving. So. Yeah, and when we record a shorter episode, that makes it feel less uh, less time wasty. Yeah. That all that driving. Remember when we only used to record for an hour? Ah, that was a long time ago. Yep. It was also uh, when you drank Bud Light <laughs> nonstop, and that's when you had to pee. Yep. Our our episode length was uh, directly proportional to the limits of your bladder. Mm-hmm. I do miss drinking beer. Well. On that note. (laughs) uh, I'll see you next week.